Tonight, a setback in the push for justice that's over a century in the making. An Oklahoma judge dismissed a reparations lawsuit filed by the three remaining survivors of the Tulsa Race Massacre. The Tulsa Race Massacre was one of the most violent, racially motivated terrorist attacks in the United States history. In 1921, a booming black neighborhood in Tulsa was burned to the ground by a terrorist mob of white citizens with assistance from local law enforcement, leaving an estimated 300 people dead. The attorney for the three survivors, who were all close to 100 years old, if not over, said they will appeal the judge's decision. The dismissal of the lawsuit comes as some are trying to downplay the racism involved in the massacre. Oklahoma State Superintendent Ryan Walters recently suggested that the Tulsa race massacre can be taught in schools without mentioning race. I would say you be judgmental of the, of the issue, of the action, of the content, of, of, of the character of the individual, absolutely. But let's not tie it to the skin color and say that the skin color determined that. Can't wait to teach about the Boston Tea Party, but we can't mention tea. Joining me now is Oklahoma State Representative Regina Goodwin, a descendant of survivors of the Tulsa massacre. Thank you so much, State Representative. Um, first off, just your immediate reaction to the judge um, denying this initial claim. I know this is not the end of the fight, but what was your first reaction when you heard the news? Uh, first reaction is that we've been dealing with this for 102 years, and uh, so it's not disappointment as much as disgust. And uh, so we have to keep fighting the good fight. Now, I, I want to play you some sound. You were at the presser earlier today. I want to play you some sound from Demaris Solomon Simmons, who, who I know, who you know, who is a great, amazing advocate for these people, and, and get your thoughts on the other side. Without a doubt, Judge Wall failed to review this case within the scope of well-established black letter Oklahoma law. We will continue to fight into our last breaths. For a lot of Americans, they didn't really know about the Tulsa massacre until they watched Watchmen on HBO several years ago. It really brought it to the fore. It really led to sort of a popular understanding of what is a tragedy that is in the lives and in the DNA of many people who are still living in that area. What does it mean for you to get national attention on this story now after literally a century of people essentially ignoring it outside of Oklahoma? Well, I would like to say that absolutely want to recognize the Representative Don Ross, uh, the late Senator Maxine Corner. Uh, Representative Ross uh, did a, a great deal in the early 2000s uh, to bring attention to this issue. It got international coverage then. And in our community, uh, certainly, we are certainly familiar with the race massacre. Uh, you know what it means, um, one, that people are educated as it relates right. to uh, racial violence, one of the greatest, um, most heinous incidents as it relates to uh, white violence against black folks. So it's good that folks become educated. However, in this city, um, our, our goal and what has been the mission of many, many uh, descendants, and, and you, you, you mentioned Miss uh, Viola Fort Fletcher, who was 109, Miss Leslie Benningfield Randall, who was 108, and Mr. Hughes Van Ellis, who's 102. Uh, we have to fight for them and for all the descendants here, right? Uh, I'm a descendant, fourth generation, uh, as well as to my great-grandparents, uh, James Henry and Carly Marie Goodwin. So what it means is that uh, these lives are valued, the history is valued, and we owe it to not only God, but to, to our ancestors right. to continue to fight for justice. And unfortunately, this history is one that quite clearly, whether anybody wants to say it, verbalize it or not, we are aware, just read a book and you'll understand that racist white folks murdered black folks, homes were destroyed, um, general, generational wealth lost. So what it means is that more folks, white, black, red, yellow, can become more educated on this history. And it's not just Tulsa's story, it, it's America's story, it's the world story. I want to ask real quick, what is the next step? I know that there's an appeal possible. Uh, do you appeal to a federal judge? What are the next steps after this judge uh, has, has thrown out the case? 
So, you know, what, what, what the next steps are is the fine legal team, as you said, Attorney Solomon Simmons has been working diligently along with Attorney Eric Miller and a number of others. And the next steps are they say there's going to be an appeal. And what we've known, again, that these three survivors never got their day in court. Uh, right. They deserve to have it. The decision was wrong. And we continue to say that the courts hold the key and the cage of justice. And we've been waiting for 102 years for them to unlock it. And as, as you spoke of uh, Attorney Solomon Simmons, you got to go all the way back to Attorney Buck Colbert Franklin. So you ask what's next this is what we're going to continue to do. We're going to fight with fortitude. We're going to fight with integrity. And we know we're on the side of right. There's been generational injustice. And I, I do just want to leave you, if the segment is about to close, Attorney Buck Colbert Franklin, 102 years ago, he talked about that right is slow and tardy, while wrong is aggressive, and that's why it survives. But we're going to meet this generational injustice with generational right. We're on the side of right. God is on our side. And uh, you cannot run away from this issue. We're not going anywhere. Generations yet unborn will continue to fight this fight because it is the right thing to do. And if we can only get other folks in Oklahoma to understand, it's just a matter of doing right. But if they don't have the conscience or the courage to do so, we are going to carry on and continue to uplift right. uh, our seniors that we issue. treasure. So what's next Thanks. is that we keep doing what we do. State Representative Virginia Goodwin, thank you so much for joining us tonight on B. I really appreciate it. This is Jason Johnson. We'll be right back.